When I was editing the keyboard control and scenes video yesterday, I noticed a couple of things happening in the video that didn't quite correspond to what I was describing. So I've loaded up the version of the performance before we programmed any scenes so that I can show you the first of those problems. It relates to setting keyboard control. So I'm going to go through those steps again and I'll show you the problem and then I'll show you the workaround. So in scene one, I wanted to enable keyboard control and have it just control parts one and three. And I told you that manipulating controls in the scene interface like this would save them automatically to the scene. And as far as I can tell, that works for everything except keyboard control, where this weird behavior happens. I don't know if this is a bug or uh, that if I'm just using it wrong, but either way, it's not working as I expect it. So let's carry on and move to scene two, and I'll turn on keyboard control. And as you'd expect, the parts that have keyboard control are the same as what was uh, set up before I switched to that scene because that uh, scene had no keyboard control management. So in scene, in scene two, I want to bring in the drums. So that was on part six. And as far as I'm concerned, that should be the end of it. So now we'll move on to scene three and enable keyboard control. And here I want to bring in the bass as well. So what we should have is on scene one, parts one and three, on scene two, parts one, three, and six, and on scene three, parts one, three, four, and six. Let's see if that's actually the case. I'll switch to scene one and, oh, we now have parts one, three, four, and six, which is what I actually programmed for scene three. And on scene two, I've got the settings that I believed to be registered for scene one. And on scene three, we've also got the settings that I believed were stored with scene one. So that's very confusing, and I can't tell you where that happens, but I can tell you how to work around it. Let's go back to scene one, and you can either use the physical controls to set this up, and then press shift and the scene button to store that, and that will now be absolutely saved. Or you can use the on-screen controls. Uh, so scene two, we just want to bring in part six as well and we'll hit shift scene two, and that's now saved. So let's go to scene three and set that up. I want to bring in part four and part six, and I'll store that. And now those scenes work as I expect. As I say, I can't tell you why they don't save properly when you manipulate them on the scene interface without pressing store, uh, that being the shift plus scene number, but they don't. That's not the case for other controls. If we um, go to scene five and turn on mixing, and let's say that we're going to change the level of part one to zero, and then go to part six and enable mixing and change the level of part one to maximum, then as I switch between scenes five and six, I get exactly what I expect. So that works, but keyboard control is an outlier. So really just to show myself that I'm not going mad, I've got a similar scene programmed here on my classic Montage 7, and I'm going to use the scene system to program exactly the same parts with part control. So here's scene one, and I will activate keyboard control management and have it man uh, turn on keyboard control for parts one and three. Then in scene two, we'll have parts one, three, and six. And then on scene three, we will just activate one, three, four, and six. Uh, so let's test those on the scene buttons. There's scene one and two and three, and they seem to be working exactly as I would expect. So on scene one, we have parts one and three. And on scene two, we have one, three, and six. And then on scene three, we have one, three, four, and six. That's exactly what I programmed, and that's what I would expect to happen on the Montage M. I have discovered another workaround, um, which doesn't involve having to press shift and scene button. Uh, so I'll show you that too. I've reset back to uh, the position where we had no scenes saved. And this time I'm going to switch scenes instead of using the tabs at the top, using the scene buttons. So I've activated scene one, I'll turn on keyboard control, and then before I do any programming, press the scene button again. 
Now program the parts that you want to have keyboard control and we can move on. Activate scene two, turn on keyboard control and press that button again and program the parts. Scene three again, activate keyboard control, press scene three again and program the parts. And now you'll see that my keyboard control groups are saved as I wanted them. Again, I don't know why that works and why that extra button press makes it work. Um, it's almost as though when you activate keyboard control, it switches the focus behind the scenes to the previous scene or something. I, I don't know. But this second button press after you activate the uh, memory switch does seem to work. So I've reloaded the finished version of the performance that we built in the uh, video now um, because I noticed that some of the demos I was doing of the utility scenes where we just control a single parameter using scenes five to eight uh, didn't actually sound like they were doing anything. And part of that was that I didn't put in sufficiently uh, extreme changes for you to be able to hear them. And the other thing was that somehow I managed to turn the cutoff on the pad to zero, so it didn't actually make any sound at all. But uh, I've fixed all that now, so we can go through and hear it in action. So as before, we load scene one and activate part two, and now we can play it. Activate common. Scene two. Scene three. Now with part one active, so we can just hear the pad and the EP. I can use scenes five and six to change the mix settings. So in scene six, we have a very low level on the pad. And if we switch to scene five, we get a much higher value. Let's go right back to scene four so that we can hear the pad and the strings. bring in the higher levels. Let's also use that AEG setting we had. So this is the standard slow attack long release. And then we can do that very short attack and release. And we can mix and match all of that. So let's come back to scene three. So hopefully that was a slightly better demo than I did yesterday. Good luck with programming keyboard control and I'll see you in the next video.